our dear father in heaven we are deeply grateful to you for this is the day you have made and we do certainly rejoice and we are glad in it thank you god for the privilege to not be of this world yet to be in the world thank you that we can occupy various spaces for your name father we don't know how to do business we don't understand it but we ask that you will show us mercy lord we ask oh god that your favor and mercy that brings success lord we accompany thy word even this day we ask lord that you will please teach us and give us understanding such that oh god we will be your true representative and ambassador in the world thank you father in jesus name we pray amen all right so we are looking at how to uh doing business rather doing business as a disciple of jesus christ that immediately tells you that you cannot do business the way every other person would do business the people of the world they have a way of doing their own business we have a way of doing our own business there's a way you conduct yourself as a child of god we don't conduct ourselves as people of the world now many people do not know this take for example you are selling something and um, the conventional thing let's say that thing is um is ten dollars let's say it's ten dollars now the conf conventional thing is that those who are selling it will say it is 25 dollars and then people will come and start pricing it and then, then they will start lying and say oh you see i'm just giving you for 20 dollars that's that's the that's how much we bought it you know and so on and they just say ah, that's business but did you know you as a christian can do it you cannot sell substandard things to people and sell it as original you can't do business that way <laughs> you see when you understand um what it means to be a christian you will see the need for the lord because you can't function the way people of the world functions the things they can have their way with with lying with stealing a little twisting here and there you can't do it so and the world system is a corrupt system it favors people who are corrupt so how do you function as light that's where we need to be as wise as serpent and as gentle as dove now it also means that we are looking at people who are either entrepreneur self-employed into business all that category yesterday we look at um, people uh, into professions various professions you know even artisans and so on as a christian as a believer and we establish that whatever you will do you must be prepared of the lord you need the grace of god the way a prophet need the grace of god you need the grace of God the way everybody needs the grace of God. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. Not because you want to go and preach, but that is the normal life of a Christian. It is in the Bible says that do not be drunken with wine, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. That is an instruction to the church. That is an instruction to the believer. Whatever you are doing, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we are just going to build on that now and just say a few things that are peculiar to maybe people into business and so on but what we shared the last time about every one of us being prepared for whatever state whatever we want to do the baseline is that we must all be full of the holy ghost whether you are going to be a doctor you are going to be an accountant you are going to be a teacher a plumber or a preacher a pastor we must all be filled with the holy ghost that is the baseline Okay, so even if you are going into business, you must be filled with the Holy Ghost. But can we look at some peculiar or specific instruction for those who are into this realm? Now, let me tell you about myself so that you know who is talking to you. Am I qualified to talk about how to do business? No, I'm not. <laughs> Why? Every single business I tried failed. <laughs> ah, some years ago, I tried some uh, some poultry business it failed woefully i've tried several things it failed 
And after a while, I needed to sit down and ask myself, why am I failing in all of these endeavors? And I realized that that's not my calling. God has called me to preach the word of God. I better I just face it very strictly. So that's how I stopped doing any business, as in, I completely stopped doing any business and I face the business that God has called me to do. And I see that I'm, by the grace of God, is helping me in the business that he has called me to do. That means that I can't teach you about business. So my duty is not to teach you about how to do business. My teach you is, my duty rather, is to show us from the scriptures how a child of God is supposed to function in a business environment, in an entrepreneurship environment, in a self-employed env environment, in a personal skilled environment. That is my duty. So I'm not the one standing here teaching you 10 keys to excelling in business. That's not my duty. Every one of you knows your onions. So I'm just bringing the side, the part of Christ. So let's look at Luke. Okay, we are looking at Luke. Let's look at Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. The Bible says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and lay down your net for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will lay down the net. And when he had, when he had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. All right? Now, the first thing you want to notice in this passage, with regards to doing business, is that Jesus prioritize the word of God above business. He prioritized the word of God above business. There were two problems. The first problem was that they were pressing on Jesus to hear the word of God. The second problem was that the disciples were toiling and caught nothing. So there were two situations. Which one do you think Jesus you address first? He addressed the issue of the word of God. He attended to that first. Why are we saying this? There is a tendency in business. There is a tendency in entrepreneurship, in your drive to be successful. That you begin to think that it's part of hard work to neglect the word of God. It's part of hard work. It's part of the business life. To relegate God to become secondary. So whatever business you are doing, whatever area you are doing, the word of the Lord must still take preeminence, must still be supreme in whatever you are doing. Jesus prioritizes the word of God. So don't let your business be a business that will now take you away from God. Be a business that will take you away from the word of God. Be a business that will not allow you to be praying. So you think that you need to go out very early. You need to close this deal. You need to travel here. You need to go and check this property. You need to quickly call this person. As much as you need to do all of that, prioritize God. Prioritize God. Jesus knew they thought nothing. Jesus knew they have toiled all night, uh, but there was a beast, there was a business that is more important. It is the business of the ministry of the word of God. He was showing them that he prioritizes that. Never prioritizes making money at any point in life. 
above the word of God. Now, you see, these are the differences between us and the people of the world. As far as the people of the world, they are concerned, the word of God is, is, is not a, an issue to them. They don't want it. So they prioritize their business. There is a tendency for you also to want to do that. Never do that. Never compromise the word of God. Never depart from the word of God. Now look at it. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, when Joshua was going to go to war, what did God say to him? What did, let's, let's even look at that. Let's, you know, even though um, it's not part of our scriptures for to line up for today, but I think it is good that we actually look at it. Joshua 1.8, he says, um, okay, let me read from, from verse 7, Joshua 1.7, maybe to um, verse 8. He says, only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from me to the right or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. That you may prosper when you do business what do you want to do you want to prosper he said this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it he said for then you will make your way prosperous we think that by neglecting the word of god we will have more time to become prosperous on the contrary god said for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success Note that Joshua was going to fight a war. And then God's recommendation is that, okay, I know you want to fight a war, but do not let this word of God depart from you. Prioritize it. It means that whatever we are going to do in life, we must prioritize the word of God. Whatever, whatever you are going to do, you must prioritize the word of God. The tendency is always that when we want to do something, there is the tendency to neglect God's word. When you are in a hurry to go out, what suffers? The word of God, your prayer life. Those are the things that you quickly eliminate when you are very busy. So you must be very careful to ensure that the word of God remains central. Because you will so see as we go on that that is where success lies. And we are not going to in any way undermine your business skills your business ideas, everything will come together as we go on. So having established that, the next thing you want to see is that when Jesus told them to lay down the net, Peter said, Master, we have toiled all night. That's verse 5. What is that also telling us? Hard work. <laughs> Hard work. You know, Peter was self-employed. <laughs> Hard work. Laziness is not synonymous with Christianity. Being shady at work, being lazy, being laid back, it's not Christian. In fact, when you study book of Proverbs, you, you will almost feel like you are a sinner when you are lazy. Many times people just want, people want to succeed by just, by just lay back. I see many people, they say, Oh, what can I do? I need extra income. I want to add something, you know. But they've been see I've seen people who have been seeing this for the last five years. They cannot take any step. They cannot say, okay, let me even try this. Let me even do this. Okay, let me draft something. Let me look. They just sit down and keep saying, Oh, we want to try. I want to try something. I'm looking at what I can do to make extra income. And then they just sit down there. They just want somebody to throw money at them. Peter said, we have toiled all night. All night. It's not somebody that will go to bed by 8 o'clock. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying when you sleep by 8 o'clock. Anything is wrong with that. And go to bed by 8 o'clock and by 11 a.m. you are still sleeping. <laughs> Everybody had gone ahead of you. He said, we have toiled all night. Peter was hard working. It was very hard working. So when we say prioritize the word of God, what we mean is not that be reading Bible and don't face your work. That's not what we mean. 
just recognize that see as much as you have skilled and you will see that they toyed all night and also caught nothing maybe i should even immediately add i said we have toyed all night and have taken nothing that's where the divine comes in hard work may not necessarily produce results but hard work is needed to get results hope i'm not confusing you hard work may not necessarily produce result but hard work is needed to get results it see, the bible says horses are prepared for the day of battle but victories of the lord you see that scripture gives us the balance the horse is prepared for the day of battle so you prepare the horse you you get everything ready but to really win the battle but you need god however you cannot say because i need god and uh, let me not bother about preparing the horses Horses are prepared for the day of battle, but victory is of the Lord. So there is a place for hard work. We will get to that also later. But then he saw that their hard work did not prosper. It didn't produce any result. Like I said, you can be extremely hardworking. You can, you can have good results. <laughs> you can have good results. You can have everything and nothing will still work out for you. And then you will see somebody. You know, I went to visit, um, I went to Lagos. Lagos is, is commercial capital of Nigeria. I went to Lagos and um, I met one of my uh, secondary school mates. I went to visit him. When we were in school, academically, it was zero. In fact, he had to repeat. He didn't graduate with us. But we were very good friends. So we kept in touch. And so when he heard I was coming to Lagos, he said, oh, he would like to receive me. And then he received me. And uh, he was so happy. Uh, he, he wanted to take me everywhere. So he took me around his business. I saw cars. I said, who owns these cars? He said, he's selling them. I said, are they your own car? Or somebody sent them from abroad and you are helping to sell? He said, no, he bought them and he's selling them. I said, wow. He said, then he said, we should go to his studio that he just got an apartment, rented an apartment over a million that he wants to take me there to see the place. He took me to his house. His, you know, I was, I was so I was just looking at him. Now this was the one student in my set, but today he had established himself. Today he's doing five for himself. As I'm speaking, he's probably on his way to UK <laughs> because he doesn't sit in one place. I know he's already applying to go to the UK. Now some of the best. Some of the best of my colleague in those days, they didn't even end up going to the university. And today, I'm telling you, they are nowhere near him. At least speaking materially. They are nowhere near him. So understand that <laughs> that's where God comes in. It's not how strong. You must be strong, but it's not how strong. You must be hardworking, but it's not hard work. <laughs> I, I hope we can get the balance. Now, but he now said, Nevertheless, at thy word, I will lay down the net. You see, for us as believers, one of the secret of our success in the business environment is your ability to hear God. It's not trying everything everybody is doing. And by this, I am not in any way saying that you should sit down somewhere and be waiting until you hear a voice. But you see, he said, he that seek it, find it, seek. Lord, what do you want me to do? And on the strength of his, of his word, you can then work hard. You see, we work hard on the strength on the word of God. You can then go and do what he asks you to do and then put effort into it. Why? You know that there is the word of God. The unbeliever is a gambler. He's just trying everything. Oh, oil and gas is what is raining. I want to go into oil and gas. Oh, oil and gas is no longer raining. It is the importation of a um, spoon from China. Oh, I want to start importing spoon from China. You as a believer, at least... Ask God to order your step aright. Don't be in a position where you, in your heart, you are saying, I know what to do. Depend on the Lord. 
with all your learning, depend on the Lord. He said, at thy word, I will let down the net. What is the difference between letting down the net now and not letting and letting down the net earlier when they toiled all night? Did you know it was the same thing? They did the same thing. You see, may God give us success that we will not be able to explain to people. It was the same thing. They were throwing nets. They were throwing nets. They caught nothing. Now, he said, go and throw. It was the same thing. They were throwing net, But behind that net, there is revelation. Is there something behind what you are doing? Is there any revelation behind it? You know, I told a sister who had a thought class. She had a thought class and um, she felt ashamed. So, I called her one day and I said, where's your result? She said, she's ashamed of it. I said, bring it. So she brought it. And I look at it, it was a third class. And then we prayed together and said, see, this is your result. You work hard and this is what you got. Don't be ashamed. Some people cheated and got better result. You, this is your own result. Some people were better than you and they got good result. But this is your own result. God will work with your result. So there was a time there was opening in a bank. She told me, I said, oh, don't go to that bank. Don't apply for that job. That is not the one we are trusting God for. But she would not believe it. She went for it. <laughs> and then they came. There were many. There were many, but they, didn't, they couldn't attend to them until evening. By evening, they just announced to them that we are sorry we will not be doing this test. So she told me. She said she wished she had listened. Then eventually there was another bank and I said, this is the bank. Go and apply for this one. So she applied. She wrote the exam. She passed. Qualified for interview. She was scared. She said they will now get to know she has a third class. I said, no, don't worry. We will train. Now look at, we did two things. I said, I'm going to prepare you. In those days, I was still involved in public speaking stuff. So I said, I'm going to train you on how to address people at interview. And then we will now pray. So we did that training. I was asking questions. You know, she was responding and so on. And then we now prayed. So when she went for inter the interview and she came back, she now told me that exactly what happened. She said, at the interview, they singled her out and they were showing out to all the people who had first class. Say, you that you came with first class, see a third class performing better than you. <laughs> and that was how she got that job. True life story. When you look at that story, there is element of hard work there, but there is also the element of God involved. It was favor. Even though we prepared for that interview, and that hard work also paid off because she could answer questions confidently. You know those little, little things, people will take it for granted. By the time they are drilling you and somebody look at your CV and say, you wrote here that uh, in 19, and then you now suddenly see that. You know, sometimes we put things in our CV. We don't put thoughts to it. When somebody looked at it critically and asked you a question, you will look like a fool. So it's better somebody had reviewed it with you to check what you are, what you are having. So they had success eventually in verse, in verse 6. It says, when they had done this, what did they do? When they are taking a step based on the word of God. You see, people think that the business world is just a, is a, it's a worldly place. So you just do it. Then when you come to church, you repent and then now you live a Christian life. No. This life of Jesus that we have, it functions everywhere. It functions in business. Don't undermine what God, don't undermine what God has given to you. I know a lady, she was cohabiting with, with a man, you know, living like husband and wife. They were living in sin essentially. But you see, she needed that because she felt um, she felt she needed that because they had to pay the rent. She pays half, the guy pays half. That was how they were living. Then eventually she had the word of God and then she repented. And she would now sit at home and make beads. She was making beads. These beads that they will use to make earring, neck, you know, all this owambe something. <laughs> so she was making that. From that, she was able to start paying her rent. Now, she, because she had left the man, she was able to pay her rent. 
eventually she was able to move to a better house and was paying her rent. How was she doing that? As she was making those beats, she would post them on Instagram. And then people abroad will see it. And then they will order it in dollars. And, and DHL will, see, will take it to them. And they will send her money. And that was how she was doing. During COVID, when, when we were all at home, I told her, I said, can you imagine? You are, you are always working from home and making money. The rest of us now, look at where we are. <laughs> she repented of her sin and thus that trade she was doing became sufficient for her to, to pay her rent, move to a better house, get well established and she, she's been doing well since. So don't underestimate what the word of God can do in whatever we are doing. Sometimes you see you have wisdom, you have your own knowledge, but Bible says don't lean on it. It didn't say don't have it. Let's look at Matthew 17, 24. Matthew 17, 24. I'm hoping we can cover ground a little today. Matthew 17, 24. Yes, it says, and then 24 to 27. Matthew 17, 24 to 27. And when they had come, when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Does not your master pay tribute? He said, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Peter said unto him, Of strangers. Jesus said unto him, Then are the children free. Now look at that verse 27, which is where we want to focus on. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go down to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first come up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and for thee. You see, you are doing business. It means you are looking for money. It is God who knows where money is. <laughs> It is God who knows where money is and who knows your capacity. Did you know that Jesus did not say to Peter that you should go and treat a patient? He didn't say you should go and make roadblocks. Jesus still relied on the skill that Peter already had. So you see why we are talking about see whatever your learning is in whatever area of business you want to do for example understand it understand it learn it now but is that skill will not be sufficient if the dimension of the word of god is not introduced into it jesus knew where money is and he was going to show peter how to get it so you see he now said to him he said Go down to the sea. Go down to the sea. Peter will, will not make it if he goes to the central bank that day. He won't find money. If he goes to central bank, he won't find money. Where should he go? To the sea. You need direction. He said, go to the sea. Cast and hook. Don't use net. The other one was net. <laughs> that means, you see, with God, you must not rely on your experience because God is ever fresh. Mm -hmm. You must always wait on God for newness. You see, that's one challenge with working with God. You see, if you are working with a man, over time you know that person. But if you are working with God, it's always a new experience. You will be doing things that you have never done before and you don't have any precedence that somebody had done it before. So you have to be in tune with him to know what he's doing part-time. So in, initially, Peter was to cast net. Now, he was to use an hook. And that hook will still be sufficient. We still get the job done. So he gave him direction. He said, take up the fish that first come up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. He gave him direction to where money is. Don't labor like a blind person. Don't labor like a blind person. But let me tell you why many Christians do not have boldness to ask God to direct them to where money is. He said, that take and give unto them for me and for thee. What does this mean? Why are you into business? 
If it is not about the kingdom, you will not be able to live the principles of the kingdom in that business. Because sometimes you are doing business, you just want to make money for the sake of making money. You don't have purpose. You see, money that is purposeless is useless. Money that is purposeless is useless. Jesus said, pay for me and for yourself. That's me. Take care of my kingdom and take care of yourself. So why are you doing business? That is where God will be ready to partner with you in your business. That is where God will be glad. Because now you are working together. Now you are working with him. Let's say you are, you are a trader and you are trading, um, let's say, um, cocoa, for example. And you are a believer. You are saying, Lord, this is for us. This is for your kingdom and also for my own provision. You see, God will be involved. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seeking the first the kingdom of God is not always about preaching. It's not always about Bible study or things that we term spiritual like that. It's about having a mindset where the glory of God, the honor of God, the purpose of God is the priority of your heart. You are saying to yourself, God, this, this business I'm doing is for you and it's for your glory. It's for your glory. So he said, pay for me and for thee. Learn to do business for the kingdom of God. Hmm. You will find boldness. You will find courage. So even though you are doing something that looks trivial, let's say you are just buying and selling electronics, it may look uh, trivial. But you see, if you are a kingdom person, and it becomes a kingdom project. Because you are first, somebody said, are you in business first for the kingdom's sake? Yes, we are in everything, you see, because as a child of God, as a child of God, even though you have a, you have a job, you have a profession, you have everything, the issue is that Jesus says, seek first. That first means that the kingdom of God must be priority. Because why are we even living here in the first place? If all I do is just to live here, do my work, get paid, feed myself and die. Of what use is that? You see, life only becomes meaningful when it is situated in the kingdom of God. Life only becomes meaningful when it is about God. Life becomes purposeful when it is about the purpose of God. So whatever you are doing, God wants you to do business. He wants you to pursue your career. He wants you to do all of those things. But it is for his glory. It is for his honor. However, he is not saying that you will not be taken care of. Look at what he said. He said, give, give unto them for me and for thee. So he recognizes your need. He recognizes that in that business you want to pay school fees. He recognizes that in that business you want to pay rent. You want to buy land, you want to build a house, you want, you need a car, there are bills, there are energy bills to pay, there are gas bills to pay, there is a tax for your car, there is tax for your TV. I had in some countries, they pay tax for TV. <laughs> hey, I had a brother who will not watch, who will not buy a TV in UK and he was always watching his laptop. <laughs> so the Lord recognizes all of those needs. He recognizes them and he wants you to meet those needs. But you are primarily first a kingdom person. You see, you are first of all a child of God before anything else. You are first of all a child of God before anything else. So even if you are a doctor, you are first of all a child of God. You will do your medicine. You are not going to go to hospital and be speaking in tongues on patients. You're going to practice your medicine professionally. But you are primarily an ambassador of God in that place. You see, unconsciously, whether you like it or not. And somebody said, we pay in Nigeria as well. Nigeria, we, don't, we pay for cable. We pay for cable in Nigeria. We don't pay, we don't pay tax <laughs> for TV. We only pay, we only pay for our cable subscription. And if you don't subscribe, there is no, there is no problem. UK, Everything there is tax, tax, tax. All of those countries. But incidentally, I heard that in Africa, we actually pay the highest tax. I don't know how true all of those things is. Anyway, 
those who are into uh, tax management, they will, they will understand all of those things. But the point, the point I'm even making is that we are first of all a Nigeria. Yeah, I wanted to say we are first of all a Nigeria. <laughs> we are first of all a kingdom citizen. You are an ambassador for Jesus. So you can be an ambassador as a carpenter, an ambassador for Jesus as a plumber, an ambassador for Jesus as a teacher, an ambassador for Jesus as a preacher. So you will still function in your normal duty. But Jesus is still your priority. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, let's look at Psalm 32. That popular Psalm 32 verse 8. Psalm 32 verse 8. Oh, how can I forget these scriptures? You know, these scriptures is wonderful. Psalm 32 verse 8. He says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. If God says this, do you know what you need to do? You need to make yourself available for instruction, for teaching, for guidance. I have a friend who is into business and um, he told me that when he was going to start, the logo of his business was revealed to him. The name of the company was revealed to him. He was not just doing things carelessly. And he said he's into business for Jesus. Now when he says he's into business for Jesus, it's not that he goes into that business Shouting Jesus, Jesus. No, he does normal business the way everybody will do business. But he understands that see, there is a purpose for which he is here, which is making money. Though he will take care of himself and his family, but he prioritizes the kingdom of God. So he believes he's making money for the kingdom. And that's how he's living his life. So when he makes money, he first prioritizes the kingdom. So you see, we are not talking of titan here. Or oh, first for all of those, no, 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 all of those ones are, are done away with. We are talking of a kingdom life where you recognize that you are now co laborers with God. Okay. So there's a, there's a part that God can give to us. If you make yourself available and say, Lord, how do I do this business? How do I go here? How, how, what approach can I use here? You will be amazed at the wisdom of God. See, did you know that? Did you, did you know that the Bible says that the depth of the wisdom, Christ is the wisdom of God. He said in him, that means in, in Jesus, is hid the wisdom of God. All the wisdom of God is in Jesus. You are now in Jesus and you are doing business. You know why we are not seeing this kind of result? We are not taking advantage of God's provision. We are functioning mainly in our own strength. I'm telling you merely saying, God, just help me. You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at the wisdom of God, what he can tell you to do. Was it not business that uh, a simple business concept of demand and supply that um, Joseph told Pharaoh? Because he had insight by God. You see, so there was a divine aspect and there was still a business labor aspect. He, by divine inspiration, he knew that there is going to be seven years of surplus. That knowledge was divine. But what they did in the next seven, that seven years was hard work. They were saving everything. They were saving everything. They were saving everything. There was surplus. So they kept on, and once, once the seven years of farming started, demand increase. Price will go up. You'll make more money. It's simple. But it, you need divine insight into those kind of things. In, in different areas that you may think you are functioning in business, in entrepreneurship and so on. Don't just go about listening to all these things they say on social media, on TikTok, on Instagram, all these short, short videos. Everybody becoming expert and coach. You can listen to them, learn from them, but you are a believer. You have an advantage more than that. You have something 
that is far greater than that. You know, in, in my line of job, when I, when I write a report and it's not well written, the Holy Spirit will be telling me. Initially, when I write a report and I feel that nudge, I will ignore it. I go and submit my report. Then my boss will call me and say, this report is not well written. You missed this, then there should be this. There should... I will feel embarrassed. I'll come back and say, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry. After a while, I, I, I sort of mastered it. So when I write a report and then I feel, I sense that inadequacy, that this report is not adequate. Once I sense it again, I now stop. I relax for a while. I go over it again. I'll see all the errors. I'll correct it. As soon as I started doing that, oh God, my boss just rate me so high. He became so confident that no, when Shegun writes a report, um, it will be good. It will be good. And that was just paying attention to the Holy Spirit to do normal human work. Brethren, there is so much for us in Jesus that we are losing out. There is so much. We are not engaging God. We are not engaging God. We are not taking advantage of the provisions that God, that is available in God. In one moment, Jesus proved to Peter that if fishing is your problem, I can solve it in one day. You know, we have technology <laughs> to fish. I saw that just this week. They took a ship to the sea and um, they had this sonar and it has radar on the, on the computer screen. And he showed them that, oh, they are now in a place where they have fishes. And immediately they started fishing. You know, Peter didn't have this kind of technology. And what of if those fishes didn't come to that place that day? <laughs> How do you know where to go in the vastness of the ocean? All right, let's look at Proverbs 22, 29. Proverbs 22, 29. Proverbs 22, 29. See, what we are doing is just looking at principles, okay? So you are the one that will apply this to wherever concerns you. Proverbs 22, 29 says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before me. Amen. Brethren, there is a place for hard work in God. Do you know that this principle, he didn't say, see, there was a man diligent and prayerful. He just even said diligent. Let me give some instances. You see, everywhere the grace of God manifests, he results in hard work. God created Adam in his own image. He, he breathed into him. What was the result? Dress the garden. Name all the animals. That was hard work. Do you know what it means to name all the animals in the world? Including those that has gone extinct. One man. And he didn't name his ceremony. One after the other for all of them. When Noah found grace in the eyes of God, it, it became work. It took, when, I, when I didn't understand this thing, I was always complaining. God, why do I have to work so much like this? Why do, why do I have to just work and work and work and sleep late every day? Then he showed me from scriptures. When, when Noah found grace, it became hard work. It angels didn't build the ark. <laughs> hey. hey, angels didn't build the ark. They didn't put the nails. It was a man that put those nails. And he had only three of his children to help him. Noah. It became hard work. When Moses found favor in the eyes of God, it became hard work. He had to write a law. See, sometimes we don't even pay attention to these things. Moses was not writing with pen that we have today. Probably a feather that you dip in a ink. He, he has to be writing. Do you know there are more than 600 laws? And they have to make copies. Then he has to judge all Israel. So he will sit down from morning to night judging every day until the father-in-law said, this thing you do is not good. Change the method. Moses will sit down from morning to night judging people. See, 
If the grace of God will lead to hard work. Did you know what Paul said? He said, I work more than, I labor more than them all. Yet, not I, but the grace of God. When there is the grace of God in your life, it will produce hard work. <laughs> you think the grace of God, when it comes, it will make you to sleep, to relax. Did you know that when Peter caught fish that day, he, I just didn't want to go into it. It was so many, they, had, they needed help from other people. The grace of God will produce work. The grace of God will make you to be sleeping late every day. <laughs> oh. So when you look at God, it is when his grace and anointing comes upon a life, he leads to hard work. You will work hard. Anointing produces work. <laughs> anointing, it produces work. Grace, it produces work. So he said, thou seest see thou a man diligent in his business. Please be diligent with your business. If there are things to read, read. If there are things to learn, learn. If there are skills to acquire, acquire it. Certificate to get, get it. Face it. You know, somebody said, you need multiple streams of income. It looks like that. <laughs> they said nobody ever became rich collecting salary. I don't know why people say those kind of nonsense. I'm like, Messi and Ronaldo are rich collecting salaries. It depends on the salary you are collecting. The salary of some president, the salary of senators in my country. If you, if you take it once, you are a millionaire. <laughs> Their salary, if you take it in a month, one, let them just pay you that salary once a month. You become a millionaire already. So it's not all the time you need multiple streams of income. Sometimes you just need to focus on the one thing God has given you and do it well. And do it right. Don't say because you are a Christian, because you pray. See, I, I won't take my car to a mechanic that speaks in tongues, but that will spoil my engine. I will not go and fix my car. I will take it to an atheist, but who knows what he's doing? Who will fix the engine correctly? I will take my car there. Don't just say because you are a Christian, they should give you the job. You cook very poorly. You now say, oh, you know, in Christendom, um, we must give work to one another. But if they give you, you will spoil it. Nobody will enjoy the food. They would rather give to a non-believer that will cook the food very well. Mediocrity is not Christianity. Neither is it holiness. There is a place, <laughs> many people are lazy. There is a place for hard work. The, you see, the sad part is just that many people that talk about these things, they talk about it as an independent thing, as if hard work is all that matters. They don't know how to situate it within God. They don't know how to situate it. So they just keep emphasizing hard work, hard work, hard work. There is a place sincerely for hard work, but it is still in God. Thou seest a man diligent in his business. He shall, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. It's not just anointing, no brethren. That fish that they caught that day, if they didn't process those fish well, he can get spoiled. And it requires work to process those fish, package it, sell it to make money. Because they are not going to sit down to eat all those fishes. They have to sell it. <laughs> so, the grace of God, say, oh God, help me, help me. He will help you, but that help will produce hard work. You must be prepared to work. You must be prepared to work. And you see, okay, we will get there. We will get there, don't worry. I wanted to say something, but I know that it's, I think it's the next scriptures proverbs 10 22 proverbs 10 22 says proverbs 10 22 says the blessing of the lord it maketh rich and he added no sorrow with it that's the difference your colleagues in the same business may be restless you will be resting They may, they may cut corners. They will have sorrow. You will have peace. The blessing of, of the Lord. So when we say hard work, it's not a hard work that will kill you. It's not a hard work that will cause you restlessness. I sleep late. I try every single day. It's a struggle for me. I'm trying to sleep before 12, but the earliest I've slept in recent times is 1 a.m. 1 a.m. That is with struggle that, no, 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 no. I must just sleep. 
And it's not that, <laughs> it's not that I don't want to sleep. There are just so many things to do. So I walk, I walk until I am tired. I can no, as in, I can no longer go on. Then that's when I sleep. I wish I could finish everything on time and then go to bed early. But I, you can see what time it is now. <laughs> and there are still many things to do <laughs> before tomorrow morning. You, you will walk. There is a place for walk. We won't just sit down. But you see, you will have peace. So even though I sleep late, there's a peace in the mind. There is even joy for what one is doing. See, there's a, there's a difference between a man that is walking out of fear and anxiety and a man that is walking out of grace. There's a man that is afraid. He doesn't want to be poor. He wants to make money. He's afraid if he doesn't get that money. So he's so hard working. You call him an entrepreneur. But he's working because of his fear of poverty. His fear of lack. But there is a Christian who is working also very hard working with understanding that this thing belongs to the kingdom. And there is grace that is opening opportunity. And that opportunity is producing work. For example, tailoring. You know, there are many, uh, the issue of tailoring, you want to sew clothes in bulk. That's when you will realize many tailors are not ready to work. When you, when opportunity comes and you say, now we want to make clothes for 500 people and we're going to give you this contract, that's when they will mess up. Because that's where the work comes. The grace has opened the door. There are, there are people who are into tailoring that grace will open the door, but then they mess the work up. Some are so lazy that the cloth will never be ready. It will never, they don't even know how to accept what they can do part time. They accept so many things. So you see, the grace of God can open a door for you. But if, if you are not ready to work hard, you will still mess that opportunity up. Adam, God said God, that he did not allow things to grow because there was no man to tilt the ground. So God only sent a mist. So God doesn't waste resources. He knows if he opens this thing, you can't handle it. But in the midst of that hard work, there is the peace of mind. So there is the blessing of the Lord that maketh it and has no sorrow to it. You will not know sorrow. Your life will not know sorrow. So if you are doing business or whatever you are doing and it's leading to sorrow, please watch out for it. Be very careful whether God is truly in it. So even though you will work hard, you will still see that it is God opening those doors. It is God bringing those opportunities. You will have your certificate. You will have your training. But it is God who will bring that opportunity. But when he brings it, it is hard work. <laughs> you may need to relocate. You may need to travel long distance. You know, when I say, Lord, when I was doing consultancy work, consultancy training, when it opens up, I have to travel. I have to fly to some other part of the country to go and do that work. Go through journey. Have, I've had to travel on roads that I didn't even know the road was dangerous. Only me with the driver. At night. It was, it was months later that I heard that they were killing, kidnappings on that road. I didn't even know the road was dangerous. So you see, the, the door opened. Uh, but I had to go through the work. I had to put in the work. I had to still do the work. God is not going to come to do the work for you. Jesus was anointed heavily. Full of grace and truth, right? But is it easy to wake up in the morning before it is done to go and pray? And then to trek, to trek from morning to night. Do you know how your body will feel if you trek from morning to night? Do you know how your body will feel? Then Jesus did that for three and a half years. Trekking from morning to night, going everywhere. He was not using donkey. He was not using horses. Only on the sea will he use a ship. He was trekking everywhere, going from city to city, from villages. And the disciples with him, just in case you say, but that was Jesus. His disciples were with him. There was anointing, but there was hard work. <laughs> 
there will always be hard work. Let's round up. Let's round up. I think the principles are coming out already. So let's just round up with one scripture and pray. Uh, Romans chapter 9 verse 16. Romans, I know you know this scripture. Romans 9 16. Romans 9 16. That's how to now have a balance. He says, so then, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. You see, ultimately, ultimately, this is it. Let me tell you something. No matter how prepared you are, how good you are, how skillful you are, how hardworking you are, if God does not show you mercy, you will not go anywhere. The same business order we do and succeed, you will fail there. It is of God that showed mercy. You see, when I wanted to get married, I learned this lesson. Because God taught me so much about marriage. I bought every book I could find on marriage. Every CD, every tape, and I'm not kidding. In fact, we just had that today. One of our pastors, one of the popular pastors in Nigeria passed away. The wife used to teach about marriage. I bought, the wife too had passed away. I bought every CD that woman produced on marriage. I, I, every newspaper writing about marriage, I was buying it. But then finally, God now told me something. He said, I've been learned everything about marriage. You will still marry wrong if I don't show you mercy. So, whereas I learned as much as I could, my final prayer was, Lord, forget about everything I've learned. Just show me mercy. Because so then it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. You may have the will. You may have the strength. But if the mercy of God does not come upon it, it is vain. So as you go about your business, ask God for mercy. Mercy will open doors that skills cannot open. Mercy will open doors that certificate cannot open. Mercy will open doors that hard work cannot open. Mercy ultimately is our currency and our strength in this world. That's what we function by. That, that is our advantage. The mercy of God. Whatever business you are doing, ask God for mercy. You have a ship on the sea, ask God for mercy. Some ship sank. Some ship got some ship got stuck at the canal. Canal crossing. Panama canal. <laughs> Swiss canal. They got stuck there. Whatever it is, brethren, you ultimately need the mercy of God to function correctly. So never, never forget. Get all your degrees. Get all the qualifications. Learn every trade you can learn. Learn every skill you feel you need. And be exceptionally hardworking. But depend on the mercy of God. I pray that God's mercy, God's mercy, will rest, will tabernacle upon our lives. God does tabernacle mercy upon a life. <laughs> you see, that psalm you, read, you used to read, he said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. David knew by experience that when God is with a man, two things will happen simultaneously. Mercy and goodness. And it will not be a once and for all experience. It will be a permanent experience. One of the signs you are working with God and you are knowing him, is that you will be experiencing goodness and mercy. I pray you will understand mercy. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. May goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Just speak to God in any way he has spoken to you. You may not be a business person, you may not be an entrepreneur, but he may have spoken to you also. And you may be in business. That business may be dying. Or God may be giving you an idea. Just commit your ways to him. Ask him to teach you. Having learned all you need to learn, ask him to teach you how to now excel in that area. 
the blessing of the Lord, the mercy of God, he maketh rich and hath no sorrow. It is not, the race is not to the strong, the battle is not to the swift. It is of God that shows mercy. And this is applicable to every aspect of our life. That ask that the mercy of God from today will tabernacle on your life. The mercy of God will be there. And I'm telling you, you will be able to testify. If you look back after a week, you will see that for seven days, that week has been mercy after mercy, mercy after mercy. That's how God works with us. God does nothing with for man except on the platform of mercy. Mercy means it's not because you are righteous. It's not because you are good. It is because you humble yourself and you look up to him and say, Father, if you don't help me, I can't make it. May the, may the, may the mercy of God tabernacle upon our lives. Give him all the praise and glory. Thank him. Let's round up our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.